Mr. Brombach, and today I wanted to talk to you about the gas laws. Uh, there are three particular gas laws that we are going to speak of. Boyle's Law, Charles Law, and Guy Lussac's Law. Now these three laws, while you can uh, say that they're related to a mathematical formula, can actually be applied in real life. So I basically want to show you how these laws can be applicable to real life by demonstrating each law for you. The first one I'm going to speak about is Charles' Law. Charles' Law basically involves two variables, volume and temperature. With Charles' Law, Charles basically states that volume and temperature are directly proportional to one another, meaning that if one goes up, the other goes up, or conversely, if one goes down, the other goes down. So if we were to look at this in terms of temperature and volume, if the temperature increases, the volume increases, or if the temperature decreases, the volume decreases. How could I demonstrate that for you? Well, let's look at these two balloons here. Balloons, of course, take up an amount of space, which, of course, is volume. Now, if I change the variable of temperature to each balloon, we will see whether or not each balloon will either increase or decrease in size, according to Charles' law. So basically what I have here is I'm heating up some hot water, and this hot water, of course, will be representative of a hot temperature. And in this particular canister right here, I have ice cold water. I will place two balloons of equal volume in each canister and we will see Charles' Law represented in real life. It's time to get away It's time to get away From you It's time to get away It's time to get away oh, From you uh, You bought a lot of money Let's see Charles Law in action All right, a couple minutes have passed by, and um, let's see what happened to our balloons. On the left side, I have the one that was in the higher temperature, being the hotter balloon. And on the right side, I have the colder balloon. As you can see here, the balloon in my left hand is visibly larger than the balloon in my right, meaning that the hotter the temperature caused the volume to increase, whereas the colder the temperature caused the volume to decrease. This, of course, was a representation of Charles' Law in action. If we were to look at Charles' Law on a graph, you see you have two variables here, temperature and volume. As the temperature increases, so does the volume, showing that it's a direct relationship. Or conversely, if the temperature goes down, getting colder, the volume would decrease. pressure and volume. Pressure and volume are inversely related, meaning that when one goes up, the other goes down. When pressure goes up, volume goes down, or conversely, when pressure goes down, volume goes up. When you increase the pressure of a system, basically going leftwards on the curve, you will see the volume decrease. Or conversely, when you decrease the pressure, you will see the volume increase. Where can you see this in real life? Well, Divers are a good representation of this. When a diver is going in water, of course, the deeper they go, the more pressure pushes against them. The more pressure pushes against them, the more their volume decreases. In this case, meaning the size of their lungs. Now, once they resurface up to the uh, air again, the pressure, of course, decreases since they don't have the water pushing down on them, and the volume would thereby increase. This is uh, something that sometimes can be an issue for deep sea divers because they can't resurface that quickly due to the change in pressure which would basically cause their lungs to expand at too rapid a rate. Alright, this third
third one's going to be super cool. This is Gay Lussac's law, which basically deals with both pressure and temperature. Now, what I'm going to demonstrate for you is, uh, well, according to Gay Lussac, when the temperature increases, pressure increases, or conversely, when the temperature decreases, pressure decreases. How can you see that in real life representation? Well, I have here a 7 up can with a small incremental amount of water. I'm going to heat it up to boiling temperature. Now, once water heats up, of course, it turns into vapor. The temperature that that happens is 100 degrees Celsius. When the vapor comes out of the uh, can, I will know that 100 degrees Celsius has been reached. Now, if I were to convert this, uh, of course, at 100 degrees Celsius or a high temperature, according to Gay-Lussac's law, the pressure would be very high. Now, if I were to take this can and immediately drop it over into this ice water, as soon as I see the vapor come out of this can, I will condense the vapor back into a liquid, thereby decreasing the temperature inside the can. Now, of course, according to Gay-Lussac's law, when the temperature decreases, the pressure decreases. So what happens? Well, the pressure inside the can will be considerably lower. Lower than what? Well, lower than the pressure outside in the room. Pressure outside in the room has never changed. What we're changing is the pressure inside the can. Now, you have, if you have a lower pressure inside the can compared to the pressure outside in the room, of course, pressure always goes from high to low according to the law of thermodynamics. What's going to happen to the can? Let's see it out. It would help if I heated up the can. Can will you heat up? Gosh darn it. Your little water molecules, won't you get going? So, why does water turn into vapor? Why don't we talk about that while we're waiting for this to uh, heat up, shall we? Water, you can think of as small little molecules, or balls, if you will. Now these little balls are moving around. The hotter they are, the faster they move around. The way they move around, or moving energy, is actually called kinetic energy. So basically what happens is once these water molecules are moving so fast, they're breaking the bonds that make up water. Once they break up, they no longer stay in the liquid phase, but move on to the gas phase. And as you can see here, we have a little bit of vapor coming out of our can, but we're getting close. The moment I see that vapor come out, I'm going to flip it over into this ice water here. Almost blocked that off. And hopefully we're going to see Gayla Lusak's law in action.